Hey there, it's Board Game Dave. Today we're taking on the handheld board game challenge created by Dwayne at Blackboard Gaming. I was tagged for this challenge by Billy Indiana and I'll have links to both of their channels in the description down below. So the basic premise of the challenge is to review some of your favorite small box games that you can fit in the palm of your hand. And I've got some of my favorites right here. First, let's start with Ink and Gold. Now this is a game that I've already viewed on my channel, but basically you and your fellow explorers are going deeper and deeper into this ancient ruin. And over the course of five rounds, you're gonna be trying to collect a whole bunch of gems. You're gonna to try to run off with some of these rare artifacts. And yeah, the deeper and deeper you go into this ruin, you're gonna come across valuable gems like this, but you're also gonna see hazards like this. And it's all about pushing your luck and seeing how far you can get and how many gems you can get because the further or the longer you stay in, the more lucrative these cards are gonna be as other players drop out and drop out and so on and so forth. It's a really fun push your luck game. It's really tense, it's really fun. It's amazing when you're out and you're watching other people go deeper and deeper and it's getting risky and risky and all of a sudden two spiders come out, boom, they bust. It's fantastic, I love Ink and Gold. But what's this inside the Ink and Gold box? Another game, Point Salad. I thought Point Salad was here. No, it's in this box. It's such a compact game that I've actually stored it in this box with Ink and Gold. Point Salad is a wonderful, fantastic set collection game in which you're gonna be collecting vegetables and scoring cards. And the rules are so simple, you ready? You've got some scoring cards like this, three piles here, and you've got a whole bunch of veggies like so. And on your turn, you can either take two vegetables like so, or you can take one scoring card, that's it. Once all the cards are gone, you're gonna score all of your scoring cards based on what they say. Two points per tomato, two points per cabbage, minus four for each carrot, uh, five points for each pair of tomatoes, so on and so forth. And whoever has the most points wins. It's literally just a stack of cards and I love taking it with me to family reunions, things like that. Casual gamers really, really enjoy Point Salad. Next is Take Five. Now, this is a relatively new game to me. I played it a bunch on Board Game Arena and then I finally bought my own physical copy and I've been having a blast teaching this to people. It's a really great game for casual gamers. So, uh, in this box, there's a deck with cards numbered one through 104 and then everyone's gonna get 10 cards. Then you're gonna look at the table and you're gonna have four cards out here making four rows. And on uh, everyone's turn, all you do is just play one of your cards. So maybe I play my 95 and someone plays 34 and somebody plays 22 and somebody plays 104 and all that you do is starting from low to high you're gonna put these cards where they belong so I'm not gonna explain all the rules but basically the 22 would go in front of the 20 34 would go here in front of the 22 95 would go here and then 104 would go here but here's the catch if you play a card that's lower than all of the rightmost cards for example my six if I played that you'd have to take uh, an entire row of your choosing. So I'd probably take this 17 row because see that one bull there? That means I only lose one point or I take one point, you want a low score, okay? So I take that, that stinks and this starts a new row. But here's the other catch, right? If at any point I am the sixth card in a row, how can I make that happen like this? And like this, that 43 goes here. And now since that's the sixth card in the row, in the row, I have to take all five of the cards before it and I get one, two, three, four, nine, 10, 11, 12 points. That's bad. So you keep going like that till somebody has 66 or more points. End of the game, whoever has the fewest bulls wins. It's so simple, but it's also so chaotic and so unpredictable, especially with more players. I love Take Five and it plays from two to 10 players. The more players, the better. I highly recommend Take Five. Oh, by the way, this box also includes Take a Number, which seems to be like a more complex version of Take Five, but I haven't opened it yet. Uh, I like Take Five, the original, so uh, eventually I'll take a look at this, but right now I can't tell you too much about it. And finally, I've got Star Realms Frontiers. There is so much game packed inside this tiny little box, you would not even believe it. It's a deck building game, sort of like Dominion, but set in space. And you've got a co-op in here. You've got a great solo mode. You can do team versus team, and you can also do every man and woman for themselves. There is so much in this box. Let's open it up and see what's inside. So first of all, you've got all these AI Automa cards. You've got the automatons and the 
Justice Beast and the Madness of the Machine and Defy the Empire. These really, really great solo or cooperative campaigns. I've done a lot of these solo. I've played them cooperatively with Hannah. They're really, really fun. And each one has its own rule set and, and the AI plays totally differently based on each card. So that already is so awesome. Tiny little rule book right there with co-op and team versus team rules in there. And then we've got our cards. So again, like Dominion, you've got cards that, well, unlike Dominion, you have cards that attack either the Altoma, you know, AI, or attack other players, right? And then you've also got these basic coin cards. Now, you're gonna use your money in this game to buy better and better cards from the supply row, and here's the cost up at the top. So you'll get better cards that give you healing, right? That lets you kind of heal your base. You'll get ones that have synergy power, so if you play more than one blob type card, you'll trigger synergy bonuses. You'll also get these bases or outposts. These are really fantastic because they basically work, they basically work as like a shield uh, sometimes so people can't attack you until they attack your outpost, right? And you'll know that they're outposts because they go sideways like this, right? They're really, really cool. And they also often have these passive abilities where every turn, as long as it hasn't been destroyed, you're gonna get attack points and coins and shield points. Uh, it's fantastic, such a brilliant game. Again, if you like Dominion, if you like those deck building games, this is a great one for you. It's not complex at all. And just the wealth of possibilities in this tiny box. Man, I cannot recommend Star Realms Frontiers enough. Eventually I'll do a whole review video because I think this game is absolutely brilliant and so, so much bang for your buck. Again, solo, team versus team, fully cooperative or every man, woman for themselves. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic, great small box game. Now, before I get going, let me throw out just a couple of honorable mentions. The first being the Mind, or in this case, the Mind Extreme. In this game, there's cards numbered one through 100, and players are gonna get a certain number of cards. So maybe I'm looking at these five cards here. And the whole goal of the game is just to play cards in ascending order without talking or otherwise communicating with anyone else around the table. It's a co-op game, and you wanna see how many levels you can make it through. So I play my 17, so far so good. Now, I'm holding this 22 and nobody's been playing for a few seconds. I'm thinking, oh, I'm ready to go for 22 and I play it, but somebody else had 21. We didn't go in order and we lose one of our lives. And you only get so many lives until you're out the game ends, right? now. Sounds pretty straightforward, and in the first few levels it is. In level one, you, everyone starts with just one card, level two, two cards, so on and so forth. But eventually, you're gonna be getting eight cards at a time, nine cards at a time, it gets very difficult. Uh, and along the way, you'll get some extra lives and some extra lifelines, these little things you can use to kind of like mulligan around, so on and so forth. So. That's the mind, a great, really fun co-op experience. If you really get into it, if you're invested, this can be a really, really good time. And finally, a game called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. In this game, players are each gonna get a face down stack of cards and you're gonna practice saying, taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza, taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza in sequence, right? So you always say the next card in that sequence, taco, cat, goat, cheese, pizza. I would recommend practicing that a few times. Anyway, Let's say I'm the first player, I say taco. And the next person says cat. And then the next person says goat. And then cheese and pizza, right? And you're saying, uh, you know, the word as you flip over a card. Now, if the word that you say, like pizza, matches the card being played, everybody immediately slaps that card. And whoever's the last to slap takes all those cards. Now, the goal of the game is to get rid of your cards as quickly as you can. So. Then that person takes all the cards and then they flip their first card and they say taco. And I say cat. And the next person says goat. And then cheese. And then pizza. Oh, pizza! Right? Slap. Last person takes the cards. Now, sometimes you're going to get a gorilla, in which case you thump your chest and then slap. You might get a groundhog, in which case you'll slap the table and then slap the cards. Right? Groundhog like that or you might get the narwhal, in which case you give yourself a narwhal horn and then slap the table. So it's a really goofy, really silly game. If your uh, gaming group or if your family's into lighter, fun, silly speed games like that, you are really gonna enjoy Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza. Small little deck of cards, but tons of fun. I've had uh, a lot of fun playing this with my family and other gaming groups and stuff. Great little game, highly recommended. Anyways, those are six of my favorite small box games. Dwayne, thank you so much for starting this challenge, and Billy, thank you so much for tagging me in it. In the comments below, please let me know what some of your favorite small box games are. I would love to know. And in the meantime, have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye. 
Finally, 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 and finally, a game called Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza.